Ron, Ron, and Fez. Fez. 1027 WNEW. <laughs> Also, a big uh, football weekend, and we'll talk about uh, some of the bets that Billy Staples, who, not enough that he's a drug addict and alcoholic, now it seems like he's a gambling addict as well. Is there an addiction the man does not have? He is just addict. Puts the dick in addict. This is how, when I see him, this is all I hear. <laughs> Money can't stay in that man that man's hands two seconds. It's either going to a bartender, a drug dealer, or a bookie. Let's get Billy Staples in here who uh had a, a big gambling weekend for him. Yeah, out of nowhere, Billy Staples is Mr. Vegas, Mr. Sportsbook. All right, Billy, uh here's uh Fez talking the other day. Uh, you were talking about some teasers that you were running with your uh, bookie. Yeah, with the the teasers, uh, I was doing a three-team teaser, putting it together. Yeah. And the way it works with our teasers is uh, you get an extra ten points to play with the spread. Right. You know, either way you want to go. So I'm thinking, I really like uh, the Texans yeah. getting twelve and a half. With the teaser, they'd be getting twenty-two and a half. Right. So I'm doing three games that way. Of course, the trick is all three games have to come through. The other game, of course, is... The Rams giving up 12 and a half to the Giants. Which, uh, you know, at that point, uh, Billy goes, I would, you know, I honestly think that they could take it. I go, I'd take that bet for $100. Billy jumps up and grabs my hand, shaking it. So he wants me to take the Giants and 21 over the Rams. Exactly. Minutes into that game, uh, I find, in the middle of a $100 bet, I find myself up. 38 nothing. Because <laughs> Staples, so sure the Giants are going to lose. He says, even with the Giants spread, you're still going to lose that game. So we're calling this Billy's 21 club. He's throwing around 21 points to everybody. So, Billy, what do you got for me? Uh, I'm paying up my bet. I'm Let a me fan. see. You know, it was a flash in the pan that you won that bet. No one expected the Giants. I expected the Rams to walk all over them. Here you go. Five crisp 20s. Thanks. It's a box of cigars today. Look at this. Look at Billy Staples paying his debt. Now, uh, you also uh, bet uh, Fezzi. Mm-hmm. Giving him, what was it, the Miami game? Yeah. No, uh, the uh, San Diego Texans. I didn't bet you that game. He bet the Miami game. No, we bet San Diego over the Texans. I did not bet you that game. No. Yes. You bet the Miami uh, Indianapolis game. No, definitely not. I don't like. I, I didn't like that game. You were going to take the Texans with twenty one. That's why it was a push. Oh. Does anyone else that when the office was full, does anyone else remember me betting Billy with the Texans? No, I I was right there the whole time, and I definitely know it was the Dolphins. Oh, this is ridiculous. You guys just... No, because I remember that's the only game I watched. Yeah, I was watching the score run because that's the only one I had an interest in because I was like, all right, I'm winning this one. It was 14 nothing. Then it was 14-3, and it was finally 24-3. Uh, to And I was like, oh, all right. If it was a teaser, Fez would have lost, but I'll give him a push on it. Oh, man. I am not buying this for one second. You, We were saying the 21 club... You bet me with the Dolphins getting 21 because they weren't favored going into Indianapolis. Your first two original bets that you liked, you liked the Giants getting the points and the Texans getting the points because the expansion. That's how didn't. the conversation started. Yes. Yes. And I said, "What's the other game I should use as the third game of that three-team teaser?" And I said, "The Miami Dolphins getting those points against the Colts." Oh, I definitely would not, never have touched that game. Who else was in the office? I was there, Fezzi, and that's the game I remember. Mikey D was there. Bring Mikey D in. Rory, what do you remember? I distinctly remember it was a Dolphin game. Mikey I, D? I also remember it, it was the Dolphin game. And Mikey D is the man with the photogenic memory. That's right. Photogenic? Photographic. Photographic memory. Although I would take a picture of his brain. Billy, you owe me $100. Fessy, this is not the bet we made. Actually, if it's a teaser, you owe me 100 Because you would have lost on a push on a teaser bet. That was what, 24 to 3? Yeah. Billy, I don't owe you that money. You owe me $100. 
Well, obviously, from now on, we're going to have to put these things in writing if we're having selective memory on our beds. Well, you're the only one with selective. Everyone else says Miami. Why would I even care? I like Miami in that game. I just like, cause I remember saying that no way that an expansion team is going to go 2 and 0. And San Diego's uh, like, matter of fact, you I never heard any of this. quarterback by name. You even mentioned the quarterback by name, how it scares you, and you didn't think he was going to have a good game, and that's why you would take the Texans, the quarterback for the Chargers. Drew Brees? Yeah. You even mentioned Drew Brees, and you go that he scares you. You don't think he's going to have two good games in a row, and that's why you would take Texans with the points. Billy, that's when we were talking about the teaser that I was doing. Was oh, anybody else there? How come everybody else remembers this a different way, Billy? I remember my bets. I mean, I only made two bets all weekend. All right, the Armenian Swing King, 40-second delay, was also in the office. The office was full. All right, Billy, you're, like, laughing and throwing your head around like we're all joking. Yeah. This isn't some kind of we're setting up Billy bit. I'm dead serious you. about this. I no. guarantee you. Oh, no, I definitely took the, uh, it was definitely the San Diego-Houston bet. All right, what, what did you remember, Armenian Swing King? Dolphins game. It's definitely a Dolphins game. Billy, you get so excited the way you grabbed Ronnie to bet with him. Yeah. You get so excited you don't listen to what you're betting. I, I knew, mean, well, Billy, I knew my bet with Ron, no problem. You want to double or nothing? Give me the Eagles twenty-one tonight. <laughs> it's like the bet with a retard. Oh, exactly. I love it. Just like a retard, he won't pay. Well, why would I pay one and not the other if I thought? Uh, if I mean, when I finally found the thing, because you obviously didn't remember the bet. Here's the thing, because you fear me and you have no respect for Fez. That's why. Oh, I have plenty of respect for Fez, just not for you know, his uh, picking ability. You know your problem, Obviously Fez? not. This is what you get from playing the nice guy. They think you're a pushover. Where I just smacked his heart right out of his chest by this point. Staples, I want my money. Well, if we would have made that bet, you would have gotten your money. How come every single person here remembers that bet? We you? obviously made that bet. Billy, this happens to you every effing day in a meeting. What happens is we're talking about one thing, we move on to another topic, and you scream something, you, Sir Jessica Parker, from a conversation ten minutes before. When it comes to my money, I don't, I pay attention very You're closely. You're a thief. You're a liar. That, that You're part. a liar and a thief. I know that part. You're a liar when you say you pay attention to anything in your life. No, I said to when it comes to money. you are a mess. I seen you in a bar. You're throwing cash around like there's no tomorrow. Well, that may and be it's true. the same way that you were betting. Like, it didn't matter. Like, you couldn't possibly lose a thing. You well, get was, too excited about stuff. It's called grandiose, Fez. That's what he was. He was grandiose. Everything was going to happen for him. Well, I went 50-50, so that wasn't bad. If, Wait, I go, if you go 50-50 with your bets, that's not bad at all. And I even gave you guys the benefit of doubt with the extra points, and I still only lost one game. What the hell is he talking about? I have no idea. He grabbed Ron's hand, made a huge bet, looked at me, pointed at me, and said, you want some of this action? Yeah. And that's when we started the 21 Club. And everybody here heard you say it. Everybody heard you say it. Now, well, my bet, it was, I remember it was the Houston, the, the Texans, and the Billy, San Diego Chargers. Look around and not one of us. And you acted like, with your goofing, like maybe we got together before. But we did not. Well, they weren't probably paying attention too much because it wasn't their money. I was the one making the bet. I remembered our bet perfectly, and I paid you up instantly. Here's uh, Joe. Yeah, I got my money. Here's Joe. Joe, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Joe. Great show. Yes, it is. Hey, uh, Billy lost the bet with the Texans or the Dolphins. It doesn't matter. If he was given 12, the Texans were getting 12 and a half, and if you tease it, it's 10 points. That makes it 22 and a half. They lost by 21. Yeah, but we had a 21 point spread on both games. We That's what the, that's what the bet was. It was 21 club, we called it. He well, acts like he remembers 21 club. We didn't call it. I was laughing, calling you the 21 Club like I was taking money off a retard, which I feel like I did. By the way, Wonder Boy's going to run out and get me a box of cigars on Billy, so every time I'm smoking one, I can laugh at him. And then I can also laugh at Fez for not having the respect from Billy. Billy, I want my effing money. Your life will be hell until I get my effing money. Well, Fez, let me say this. He doesn't believe you. He I know does, he doesn't believe me. You know why? Because you play it too easy your whole life and you don't get respect. You, that whole nice thing, it doesn't work out in the long run. Not with Billy, it doesn't. Well, if this was the bet we were talking, we only talked about one game. I didn't even talk about the Miami Colts game. And I, I, it's, it's actually insulting to think that I welch on a bet. I you welch are on welch on a bet. insulting. You, you effing welch on life. <laughs> this is insulting. It's insulting to Fez. 
In the meantime, though, you did prove my theory. What's that? Because uh, I tell Fez he's too easy on you guys. And you know that I'd beat you with the claw end of a hammer if you tried to rip me off like you did to Fez today. Here's uh, Andrew. Andrew, you're on run of Fez. Andrew. Hey, uh, Billy's like Fred Flintstone. Bad, 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 bad. When he leaped up and shoved a meat fist in my hand, giving me 21 points. Giving me 21 points. I all, I was, I was crying with laughter and screaming that the Giants had no chance. Yeah. Well, they had good reasoning. They just played. Uh, they had a uh, a a rare, a very rare, good performance yesterday. Here's uh, oh. <laughs> here's John. John, you're on run of Fez. Hey, John, what can we do for you? Hey guys, uh, I heard the word. No, you didn't. We haven't used it yet. Oh, you didn't? No. No. Oh, watch what you're saying. It sounded like it. No. That's just a lie. I'm sure we didn't get anywhere close to it. Totally lie. Here's uh, Mike. Mike, you're on Ryan Fez. Mike. How you doing? Uh, he lost a, also lost another bet this weekend. I believe he bet Ronnie that he wouldn't take the money from Austin Alehouse if there was under 300 people there. Oh, yeah. Is that right? It was I, only about maybe 100. I didn't take a penny. You didn't get paid for that? Nope, I didn't get a, take a penny. You're not going to get I paid. He actually cost the bar money. He was, he was uh, throwing out shots and beers like you wouldn't believe. Ronnie, he... Uh, Show, uh, throwing out shots and beers to who, Billy? With the owner's permission. We were having contests. What kind of contest? We were having show your hiney for a hiney. That cost uh, the bar uh, one Heineken and three shots. Yep. For a flat, nasty ass, too. No, it was an ass. You know, you can't complain about seeing a nice girl's ass. Well, All right, hold on. Billy. What? You're doing nude stuff out now? No, it's just... Do you a... read the effing papers at all? Of course. Do you know what they're doing with this radio station? It wasn't nude. There was no nudity. Absolutely none. It was just a girl in her underwear. At an event, at a station event. Who was there with you? Uh, Rachel, uh, Rob, Matt... Who's the Rachel? The, the and promotional people. Who's Rachel? The, the O and A eight Rachel. Oh, okay. Who else? Uh, Rob, the big Macedonian guy. Yeah. Uh, Matt Devoti showed up. Am I gonna have to talk to these people? Uh, regarding what? Your behavior. My behavior was fine. This was guy was just board. saying you're acting like a nut. Oh, of course they're going to say that. I was having a good time. The people had a good time. We had. A, we was had a... any of our people there? Yeah. Oh, Mike, Mikey D. Hi, Helen, well, bring black them in. girl. Bring them in. Mikey D. Come on in here. Get Mikey D. Yeah. And Ronnie, he says he didn't take a dime. That's only because he's getting paid later through sales. He's lying to you. He always lies. Earl has to get him a check later on. All right, Mikey Day, you were out in San Billy, right? Right. How was he behaving? Oh, it was like, it was awful, man. <laughs> he was, in the first five minutes, a Heineken goes flying off the, um, he spilled a Heineken. Then I saw him running around and he knocked over a potted plant. Oh, my gosh. Why are you a maniac at a client? He's telling everybody, hey, drink up, you cheap bastards. Why rude, why rude to the listeners? I wasn't being rude. It was, we were having fun. It was a laughing. Everyone was giggling. They were all giving, we're doing giveaways and stuff. I was announcing the specials on Heineken. How was it, Mikey? Seriously. It just, just awful, man. Just awful. Oh, we had a party. It was fun. Oh, man. <laughs> why are you knocking stuff over? Were you drinking? No, absolutely not. Was he drunk? Um, I didn't see him drinking. Was he drunk, Mikey? I couldn't tell. Would you? You don't think he was buzzed? He, Let me check with black girl. He was. Let me check with black girl. Black girl. He was a little juiced. <laughs> so you're drunk you at a gig. Yeah. Now Mikey D is now nodding his head. Yes. No. 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 I'm nodding. I mean, he wasn't I, falling but down he, drunk, but. He, I mean, it was a party. Everyone was just kind of, you know, jacked up. He was definitely jacked up just with doing a bar appearance. It was a natural jacked up. Okay. Did you see him with a beer? I thought I saw him holding a, a Heineken. A sure. Heineken mug. That he knocked over. <laughs> God, can't trust you two seconds. Oh, it was a great time. You can trust me 100%. Nothing went wrong. People were pulling their asses out? Yeah, he, um, he had to get the girl back up and give her six shots and a Heine to show it again. I can't believe you're trying to do some sort of nudity contest. No, it's, it's like you see, just like the bet, you pay f and no attention to anything that goes on around you. Well, Fuzzy, you didn't get your hundred. I got my hundred. 
Earl, deduct a hundred from his check. <laughs> Earl's just writing things down. Here's uh, John. John, you're on right of fuzz. Hey, John. Yeah, what's up, guys? Yeah. What is Billy doing in the bar drinking? He's a drunk. He shouldn't be in a bar at all. Not if he's even if he's not drinking, he shouldn't be in there. He was drinking. Yeah. I mean, he's an alcoholic, and, he, and he's gambling on top of that. He's a degenerate. you got to stop. This guy is never going to get his life together. I was not drinking. I was not gambling. When at my appearance, I you had were gambling time. with me no, in no. stupid ways. I'm talking it about that matter. evening. You go into a barber shop long enough, you're going to get a haircut, silly. <laughs> you get it. You I see don't that? Get it. I was only there for two hours. I was on my best behavior, and we had it a great time. He's a retard in a ball minutes. pit, going there for nuts. All right, let it me does. ask uh, Earl. Was he high? Was he high? No. I mean, high in terms of drinking. Did he have a buzz on? I, I, I really couldn't tell. He was definitely just, I don't know what it was on. or He's just, he's just jacked up. He was just, like, more psyched than usual. Oh, jeez. And he wore his orange shirt. And we shirt. all know how horrible that is. Hi, thanks, <laughs> Sean. And how unfunny it is. Here's uh, Mike. Mike, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, Mike. I was personally offended by his orange ball of failure shirt. He's still wearing that orange ball of failure yes. shirt. Yes, I like my orange Party shirt. shirt. It was horrible. All right, see you later. Can yeah. we at least get ball of failure printed on the back? <laughs> I'm getting a box of cigars today. What are you getting, Fez? I'm oh, getting screwed. Oh, that's right. He wouldn't pay you. Billy, you are dead to me. I am dead serious. Look at me. Uh, yeah. Well, you are. Look at me. You're dead to me until I get my money. Well, maybe then if you remember the bed properly, I wouldn't be dead to you. You want to go home right now, fat <laughs> stuff? No. I ain't kidding around with you. Well, I'm not kidding either because we didn't make that bet. You better back off, big man, right now. Okay. Here is uh, Tommy. Tommy, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, Tommy. Yeah, I saw Billy smoke a track in the bathroom. Billy. I'm sure he, he was. He, he said he'd give me a, if I gave him a rock, he'd give me his daughter for the night. She really puts out, Billy, right, you fat scumbag. Billy, what? tell me you weren't smoking crack in the bathroom. Oh, yeah, and I'm also whoring out my daughter at the same time. No. I wouldn't be surprised. No. No, of course not. At one point, he's running up and down the bar looking for the girl that pulled down her pants and says, Where's my hiney girl? Where's my hiney girl? Up and down the bar. Just running around a restaurant like an ass. All around the bar. Oh, well, because she won a beer, and I had a beer in my hand, and I couldn't find it. I had to give it to her. What happened? It was a fun time. People had a great time. Sounds like a nightmare. All right, let me check with Mikey Dan. I want you to tell the truth. You're not doing this for me and Fez, right? Right. This is your own opinion. Right. Was it a fun time or an embarrassment? Um, it wasn't fun. I don't think it was a fun time, that's for sure. What, why didn't you think it was fun? Well, people are yelling to him, no jokes, Billy, don't say any jokes. Uh, every time he tried to do something like uh, he would give out a hat, and then he goes, oh, I've got a real hat on for you, to the girls. Oh, God, so you pulled out the A-plus Red Bank material, huh? And then people... Did anyone get asked if they had a colonoscopy? He did mention Fabio. What do you expect, Fabio? He no. did, threw that I, out there too. I did. Th I did that as a purpose, purposeful call. Step back into to the Red 21st Bank. century, Captain Unfunny. Here's Eric. Eric, you're running fence. Hey, Eric. Hey guys. I saw yeah. Billy shooting ace between his toes. You chipping? No, I wasn't doing that either. Unfortunately, no. All these uh, stories are. I saw. Hey, Billy, when the heroin hit him, that made you feel good, though, didn't it? Yeah, when he just, like, collapsed backwards like that, that was, yeah. like, such contentment and relaxation. The only thing I like about this whole story is I got my hundred. Did you get your expense? No, of course not. <laughs> he gave but me trust mine. me, trust me, I will get it back one way or another. I'm going to enjoy getting $100 worth of misery. Here is uh, Talon Helen, Mikey D's wife. How you doing, Helen? Hi, boys. How you doing, baby? Hey, Helen. I'm okay. Um, I was just a little bit embarrassed at one point because um, I was introduced as Mikey D's wife. We got the celebrity in the house, Helen of Joy. If anybody oh, I... wants to do his bisexual wife, she's right here. Oh, and oh my like, gosh. Say that, Helen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. did, and I just went so red, and I just was livid at that point. But How it, awful. It was kind of uncomfortable. I mean, there's, you know, like... 60, 70 people there, so. And, like, we didn't know anybody, so it was kind of, you know, weird. <laughs> All right, turn your radio up, Helen, so we can hear you. All right, honey. Bye. Right, Bye-bye. Who's on the phone stuff to tell people to turn the radio down? Is that Wonder Boy? Punch yes. him in the heart. Heart punch? 
momentarily stop in his... I don't tell him he's got to get ready to get me uh, cigars. Go down the street and give me Billy cigars. What are you getting, Fez? Oh, yeah. Forgot it. I'm getting crap. Billy, thanks for paying me. No, no problem. You won the bet out. What I'm been... getting is my effing revenge. This way I don't have to beat you with the claw end of a hammer. You know what you need, Fezzy? It's one of those assertive uh, workshops that they do with people that are too nice. We're going to see how nice I am. Yeah. God. Here is, uh, here's John. John, you're going to run a Fez. Hey, John, what can we do for you? How you doing, boys? Yeah. Well, you know, Billy's got a disease, Fezzy. That's why he can't pay you. Just like his alcoholism, he has a disease. He probably doesn't remember it. Of course, well, it's always scam. someone else's fault. That's the scam he's going to run on you now. I'm waiting to hear this coming up soon. See ya. Well, gambling is a disease. And then there was a lot of things to be given away uh, from, from At the station. gate the other night? At the Al House? Yeah. And uh, Billy is saying, hey, we got a lot of cool crap out here to give away. And uh, that uh, didn't really get people up there. Yeah, but everything went away, didn't it? Everything got given away. People were waiting in line for stuff. Yeah, everything went away. Your dignity, your wife, your daughter, everything went away. <laughs> Can I go uh -huh. now? <laughs> Please. Mike, you really didn't like his appearance at all? No. And what were you doing there? Well, I was picking up a girl at Regal Park. So we uh, stopped by. So he just came just to be able to come down and report and bash me when, why, you, why you, when you had a good time. I know you did. If you could entertain people, people wouldn't have to do this. People were entertained. People gave me a list of, you know. Who was entertained more? The girl that you were chasing around the bar, asking her to pull down her pants, or the people that you spilt beer on? No, I was actually chasing the girl to give her free beer, not to have her pull down her pants. Is that when you spilt the beer on her? No. Sounds like a train wreck. Here's Mike. Mike, you're on another fence. Hey, it's Mike. It's like unbreakable train wreck. 2069. All right, buddy. Hoo -ha! Yeah, I went to the bathroom that night cause, uh, to wash some of the beer off my shirt. Yeah. And he was doing rails of pancake mix in the stall. Why are you, Billy? Absolutely not. Did you buy an eight ball with Fez's money? Nope. Didn't even go in the bathroom all night, so it had to be somebody else. Oh, right, wait a minute. We've got a little bit of uh, audio from his gig the other night. That sounds about right. It's a crash. Here's Squeegee. Squeegee, you're on a fence. Hey, Squeegee. Yo, boys, I just got to ask one question. Billy, yeah. what kind of retard makes a bet with his boss and then squelches on it? I mean, uh, let me give you some friendly advice. Just pay him the money. You're a freaking idiot. Right, first of all, he didn't squelch, he welched. There it's you a big go. difference. And and squelch is what's on your CB. And first yeah. of all, if I did neither, I paid the bet I lost. Yeah, I liked it, that $100. <laughs> What you get? Did you get at least 50 fez? I got, uh, un I got the greatest time ever getting my money back. The next month, two months, six months, if he lasts that long. Here is uh, Jeremy. Jeremy, you're on Red Fez. Hey, Jeremy. Biggest card holder, 8669. Hey, I know why our he goes there so much. It's because that's the bar his dad died in. Oh, enough of this crap already, <laughs> all right? Here's uh, Anthony. Anthony, you're on a run of fence. Anthony. Hey, brand new 27305 here. All right, buddy. Hey, uh, Fezzy. Yes. You can't, you can't let this fat ass get away with this stuff, man. He won't. He yeah, won't, yeah. trust me. Can I ask you guys a the question? The nightmare will ju uh, will, is just beginning. All right, how, how does this fat ass get away with all this stuff that he does? He's a disgrace to the radio show. He's always effing up. He's always doing something stupid. I mean, Tell who me. See, who sees he's sucking? Honestly, guys, come on. There's got to be someone in the station. This is ridiculous. This guy is a horror. All right. See you later. If there was anyone left in the station, I'd wonder. I thought I saw some movement today down the hall, but <laughs> it was just a pigeon. Oh. Here's uh, JP. You're on a run of fence. Hey, JP. Hey, Betty is 10290 hey. checking in. All right, buddy. hoo -ha! Yeah, uh, Fezzi, you know what you gotta do? You gotta pull um, uh, Colonel Hartman from Full Metal Jacket, uh, take it out on everybody but Billy so that they all get back at him. <laughs> Start being uh, meaner to uh, Hawk and the Crying King and Wonder Boy. Yeah, and then they'll, they'll all uh, give him a soap party. <laughs> Very nice. I love it. All right, let it be. Oh, a bad dream, bad boy. Oh, <laughs> Remember, it's just a bad dream, bad boy. <laughs> He's not going to be able to sleep then, Fuzzy. 
He better not. He probably shouldn't. 877-692-1027. Here, uh, let me just check you. Mikey D, should he be able to do any more gigs? Not oh. if he does what he did at, uh, the last night at uh, Austin Ale House. No way. Billy, I wasn't there. No, of course, no. And uh, everybody loved it. The, the owners, the salespeople, great time. So I have total clear right. conscience on everything. Th this uh, said to me, Billy was giving out signed pictures of his own 8x10. Uh-huh. I had them uh. if anybody wanted them with an NEW sticker on them. It was fun. In a place where they serve food. <laughs> yeah, I think he gave out, what, six maybe and three I got. Yeah. Right. So that was about the total of 8x10s he gave out. Yeah, who wants to carry an 8x10 in the bar all night? But if anybody did want them, I had them. Well, I got one. I was very well prepared for that evening, so I re kind of resent the fact that everyone says it sucked. I had uh, the bathroom stickers with me with the time crossed out. <laughs> I had everything. I had my own pictures. I had all the giveaways to give away. I was well prepared. I'm glad you think the sticker thing's funny. Why did I think it was funny? Because you did the big <laughs> laugh behind it. Maybe we ought to call Melissa from Philadelphia and apologize. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, we're going to take a break. Oh, wait a minute, one more thing. Let me go to Dexter. Here's a question from Fez. Dexter, you're on run of Fez. How is it possible that Fez is going to make uh, Billy's life more of a living hell than it already is? I'll find a way. Seriously, that's like being in hell, burning up, and the devil saying things are going to really start getting bad. <laughs> now it really gets hot. It's going to be tough for you, Fuzzy. I'll find a way to top his lows. Here's what he's betting on. You aren't, wor aren't going to stay with your anger. He knows you're angry today, but he figures by tomorrow it'll wear off, by the uh, day after that, or and within three days it'll be forgotten. Then he's mistaken. He's sadly mistaken. That's what you're betting on, right, Billy? I'm not betting on anything, because I know I'm, I have nothing that I feel bad about, because I know what I made a bet on. <laughs> you're going to feel so bad. You're going to feel so bad. <laughs> no, I might want to turn in the resignation now. I, wanted, I know what I did. I know what I bet on, and that's the only reason I cared about that game, so... And everybody that was here who said you bet on the Miami game. Everyone else is lying. Everyone else is wrong. I did not even talk about the Miami Colt game. Everyone was in the room. I'm asking you. Call everybody in the room a liar. Oh, we've already done that. Everyone in the room was call a liar. Call everybody I, in the everyone room Everyone in the room was a liar. I, I, I know Ronnie. what I bet on. I, I'll, I'll tell you this. I honestly don't remember the Texan game coming up at all. I never even remember hearing about that. Mm -hmm. But after I had my hundred, I'm already thinking of what kind of cigars am I going to be getting? After I had that big, fat, uh, sweaty handshake, I knew I was on my way. Now, I remember the specifics of it, so I have no problems with that respect. I right, Dan from Hoboken says, Fez may forget, but Fez has friends who won't. That's all I'm saying. Who sent that? Dan from Hoboken. Nice. He's with you. Thank you, Danny. Jersey Rich says uh, to uh, Billy, remember uh, this face? I'll be your father-in-law someday. You know what, Jersey Rich, just keep your mouth shut if you know what's going on. What's that even you. mean? He wrote. What that. are you going to do to Jersey Rich? Well, if I not pay him. Billy wrote that on uh, the eight by ten that he gave me to give to Jersey Rich. I'll be your father-in-law. No, someday? remember this face. You're dead to me, Jersey Rich. And then he signed it, Billy Staples. I was personally supposed to give it to him. Why? Why? Because of the stuff he always has. He always has a little comment to say about my daughter, which is inappropriate and unforgivable. I find them deli delightful and witty. <laughs> well, it's wrong. If you are the daughter, you'd probably feel otherwise. If I was the daughter, I'd have a gun in my mouth right now. Why? He was my dad. I'm a good dad. Well, when was the last time you saw her? Couple Age four. Hmm. Oh, so now it's uh, now it's pick on Billy for being a big da bad dad. Is that it? No, I got my hundred. No, it's yeah. pick I on Billy for being a bet welcher. No, Billy does not. If I was a bet welcher, Ronnie wouldn't have his hundred dollars. I got my hundred. But see, the difference is, Fuzzy, I stick with things. Mm-hmm. Watch me stick to this. I don't think you're going to stick to it. Hawk, do you honestly come in? I'm going to ask the Hawk. This kind of a psychologist. Do you think that Fez will stay mad at Billy 
or you agree with Billy that this is one of those things that Fez just lets drop? No, no. Fez is uh, in this for the long run. Oh, you're thinking he's going to stay in it for the long run? In this case, yes. Wow. In this case. You're absolutely right, Hawk. Fezzy, I was either going to pick up the money from Billy or John Edwards today. Didn't make any difference <laughs> to me. 877-692-1027. We got to take a break. We'll be back. It's Ron Fez. Lord Billy loves a gambling scam, yeah. They're trying to make a living out of shaking Fezzy's hand. Oh, when it's time for paying, his memory goes bad. Billy loves a gambling scam. Thank you, the Armenian Swing King, 40-second delay. We're Ron and Fez. He uh, has been putting our life to music lately, Fez. <laughs> it's a little unnerving. But again, a very accurate song. Thank you, 40-second. No we did have a little problem where Billy making crazy bets. And Fez, you honestly believe you bet the Miami game. He gave me the Dolphins and 21 points. Everyone in the office heard it. And again, his booze-soaked brain can't remember what he said. Can't remember one moment to the next. Hmm. 40-second delay. Feel free to work on all the Dead Dad songs you want to. <laughs> Ouch. So I've been waiting for. You're okay. <laughs> you just got the word. I just Fez. signed off on it. Fez M. Watley. I'll do a whole musical. There you go. Why don't you just start and call yourself F.M. Watley? F.M. Watley. Nice. That'd be nice, right? 1027 F.M. Watley. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little giddy today from winning my bet, Fez. He is a fat moron, and he is in for it. I guess technically uh, you did win your bet. You just think it paid. Mm hmm Could you imagine if this happened in Atlantic City? Uh, no. I'm sorry. I'm not paying you. We're going to keep the money. Yeah. Yes, you did win. Yes. Well, why would I pay that guy if, uh, you know, proves I pay? I know exactly what happened. It happens every day in the office. He gets so excited, he can't pay attention to what he's saying, and he does. he's in a conversation that happened ten minutes ago instead of the one that's currently going on. This is all I say when I see uh, Billy coming down the hall. Right into my pocket. He gives me 21 points. I'm up 38 to nothing halfway through the first quarter. Oh, here comes my cigars from Wonder Boy. Very nice. What'd you get, Ronnie? A nice box of uh, meditations. What's Beautiful. That, what's that run down there? It was uh, $95. Son of a bitch. You see why I'm using the reservation fence? <laughs> Yep. Now I got five hours left over. This is why I get my stuff from uh, the Indians. A Rapuspatak. Yeah. I should find out what... I... Oh, now I'm frustrated. That's all free. So basically, I got a box of cigar and five hours for my bet. What did you get, Fez? I got hosed. Here's Kenny. Kenny, you're on run of Fez. Kenny. Oh, hold on. Let me turn on my radio because Billy didn't tell me to. Of course not. He's, uh, he's the worst ever. <laughs> he's mad. horrible at everything he does. Here's John. John, you're on run of Fez. Hey, Ron. Hey, Fez. Yeah. What can we uh, do for you, Johnny? Listen, Ron. I mean, excuse me, Fez. Um, I'm, on you. I'm on your side with this whole uh, bet thing. Listen, can I say... Yes, any thing? normal person would be. Anyone who wins a bet ought to get paid. Listen, I know when you guys go over to the switch over... Some, you know, whenever whenever they, you guys uh, finish this whole thing with the radio station. Right. Do you think uh, Bill, the Orange Ball of Failure is going to be on the short list or on the long list to stay with you guys? I don't want him with us. And don't you think that he should be thinking about that? Put in investment? I don't think he thinks that way. No, no yeah. of course not, because he, um, he he's short-sighted, and uh, basically he would probably have to pay you the rent that he pays his mother. I don't think All he's right. paying her any Thanks rent. Thanks a lot. All right, here is, because I haven't gotten over the other day. As Fez holds his grudge, I hold, I hold my own grudge. Although, trust me, I'll hold it a lot longer than Fez. By the end of the week, Fez and um, Billy will be pitching nickels together. It won't happen. You're too Unless nice. it's $100 worth of nickels. You're too nice of a guy. That's what you're known for. 
I can get away with anything with Fez, they say. I got no reason to be nice to that guy. Yeah. He's a waste. He contributes nothing to this show. All right, Hawk, come on over here. Because I know we can trust him. Who would you say is a nicer person, me or Fez? I want you to really be honest. If I had to choose, like yeah. if there was a gun to my head, yeah. I would... Uh, There's always a gun to your head. I would pick Fez, I guess. Let me tell you, if there was a gun to your head, I'd be the one holding it. See, That's, that's the difference. Yeah. And you would think, if I had to get away with something, I'd try to do it with Fez, not with Ron, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that's what this Billy looked at. He looked down at his $100 and said... Who am I going to be able to get away with only giving out a hundred? I'll give it to Ron, and I'll stiff Fez. Who you think he'd get away with it? You don't believe me? Put a gun up to Hawk's head. He'll tell you. You got to put a gun to his head, though. I think he likes it. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he says it turns him on. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Here's uh, Peter. Peter, you're on a uh, run of Fez. Hey, Peter. How you guys doing? Yeah. Yeah, AP's got that it was a murder-suicide, this thing in Times Square. Murder-suicide? That's so intriguing. It's a double murder-suicide, but that's all the details I have right now. Here's uh, Freddy. Freddy, you're on Run of Fez. How you doing, guys? Yeah. Big card holder 23617. hoo I heard, really, that the true fact is that those guys, uh, those people were all at Philly's show two weeks ago. At Red Bank? Yeah, that's where he was. they were. And they just never got over it. Uh, you, know you know what? Uh, That's right like a terminal good. disease. It took it that long to kill him. That's fine. Uh, you around like Vietnam. Hey, Fez. That's not right what he's doing. He owes you the money. That's for sure. Let me tell you, I would I would ban Billy till he pays you. All right. Thanks a lot. Take it easy. No, I want him around. You're going to make his life a living hell, huh? Yeah. Here's uh, Terry. I think starting tomorrow we're going to do Billy Daughter Joke of the Day. Yeah. Hey, that uh, shooting... Hey, Terry. Hey, how you doing? Go ahead. You won't do that. Yeah, I got an update on the shooting. That was a uh, office bet gone bad on a football game, and the guy welched on his bet, shot the guy later, found out he was wrong, and felt bad and turned the gun on himself. Wow, that's bad. That's awful. Yeah, terrible. Thing. But it'll happen. It just shows that'll happen. Fez, you know, some of the guys were saying when I was taking my smoke break, we know Fez, so we'll forget about this, and he'll become jolly happy Fez again. Nope. The joy is gone. When it comes to Staples, the joy is gone. You don't like him anymore? I hate his fat guts. What, from this bet thing? Yes. Because I know you. You're somewhat of a professional gambler during football season. Right. That's Chilling my time of year. If I go to Vegas, yeah. it's only going to be during football season. You call that your busy season. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff that you bet on. You're not real big with cards or anything. That Right. And, you know, when you do gamble, especially with friends... There has to be some kind of an honor code, or sure. else you can't gamble. No. Then you well, why bother? Yeah. There's no sense of gambling for fun. Right. And there's no sense of gambling if you're not going to get paid by a loser who's living with his mom. I got paid, and I'm taking home this uh, free box of cigars. Those are nice. Here's uh, Dave. Dave, you're on around a fence. What's going on, buddy? Yeah. Hey, Dave. Hey, you know, Quasimodo predicted this uh, love triangle, is it? Uh, Quasimodo did not predict it. Nostradamus did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was Notre Dame. Fez was going to get his money today. I'll tell you what, Fez. I feel bad that you didn't get your money because I got this box of cigars, and it's free, and it's got me in one of those moods. You ever know? Oh, when sure. You, when you get paid that gamble money, it feels like you can't get rid of it fast enough. I'd love to have that feeling. Yeah. Or instead, the feeling that Billy's got of impending doom. Billy, Fezzi, is there any way in the world that Billy could have been right that you guys did not have the bet? Not that I can think of. No. Everybody seems to agree with you. Everyone heard it. Except for the one guy who's supposed to pay you. And oh, he oh just, of course, naturally. He just won't. He literally drew a line in the sand in front of you today. He's got booze in his ears. My booze, hound. He can't put the booze down. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero oh, two seven. Mr. Booze has got him again. Where's uh, Mikey D and Billy? Let them come in and admit uh, some of the stuff that's bothering them. Mikey D, you first. What would you like to confess, Mikey D? What do you got, Mikey? When I was a kid, um, one of the neighbor's kids uh, used to play around on the block, and I uh, put little uh, little rocks, little pebbles in his ear. And I said, okay, now let's see if it falls out of the year. And it did the first time, but then I put a few more in there, and they didn't come out. And he had been 
been, be rushed to the hospital and he lost some of his hearing. Wow. Really? Yeah, and uh, I got a beating for that. From he my... deserved it. <laughs> sure. You and thought I... somebody their hearing is permanent. Well, it was part of his hearing, and it was one side, but I know that was permanent. Uh, you played it down, but that's the man's hearing. Yeah, it I still know. bothered him today. Any yeah. missing is bad. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. God, I got a lot of these things floating around too. Billy, what about you? Well, I when you didn't pay your bets. <clears throat> when I was a kid, I did a went on a stealing spree at a campground. We used to go out and steal all kinds of stuff, and uh, still on it, stole a hundred from me. We used to just we had a whole tent full of stuff we stole from empty campsites, and never apologized for it. And it's bothered me ever since. How old were you? Uh, Ten or eleven. Eleven. That was the year. Actually, yeah, it was just before, just, I actually must have been 12, it was right after my dad died, it was 12, so, but we had this whole tent full of booze and stereos and stuff, so. Really? Out of all the horrible things you've done in your life, that's the one you feel the most guilty about? Well, that and molesting a girl who was passed out. How old were you? Related? No. Uh, I was in my late 20s. Late 20s? Yeah. How old was she? 15? No. Eight? She was, her brother trusted me to drive her home and... <laughs> So, what did you do? You pulled over. Yeah, just kind of took off all her clothes and stuff, and whipped all, all her stripped clothes. her, stripped her. Yeah, she was like semi-conscious and stuff. Just did a little diddling. Did you run a batch on her? No, I didn't think of that. So your friends, your best friend's sister. I hardly knew the guy really. Passed out. You uh, molested his. Uh, his sister. Yeah, and no one ever knew it either, so, and then we just left her on, the, I left her on the side of the road because I didn't know where she lived. Naked still? No, I put her clothes back on. Never saw her again? Never again. Never went back to that bar again. Sure, that's a sick story. I mean, most of our stuff all happened in our teens, not in our late 20s. When they're were, actual felonies. You were even married then, right? No, this is when I just split up. The, you could no. probably still be charged for it. Pez, haven't you put uh, this hundred dollars behind you yet? No, no. And I'm sure he's got a lot more stories of how he's treated his family, his wives, his co-workers. The important thing is you paid me, Billy. Well, yeah, I paid the winner. Because oh, not the loser. What'd you say? I said I paid the winner. You didn't pay me, Effer. No, I didn't pay you. You didn't pay me whatsoever. No, I know I didn't. And if you want to talk about a loser, look <laughs> at your own effing life, ass. You're going to look at my life? Yes. What, you don't remember the bet we made, and you don't remember the specifics of it, and you're throwing this in my face? I remember all the specifics of it. It was Miami. It was, oh, like, I'm going to give Miami in 21 points. What kind of friggin' idiot do you think I am? Uh, the very best kind. Yeah. Well, then... Sorry that you're mistaken, Fez. I am not mistaken. Okay. I thought you're it was Miami, idiot. too. No, well. Everyone in the room said Miami. And, Billy, you're not being set up. All right, whatever, Fez. And why would I pay Ronnie and not pay you and go through all this crap? That's what I'd like to know, because you got a lot more crap to go through if okay. you want to hang around here. What kind of crap am I going to go through? All right. Maybe we'll start to the dead dad jokes next. Uh-huh. You know, maybe Billy daughter joke. Joke okay. of the day. You want to go that way? Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I do. Fine. Here is uh, Chrissy. Chrissy, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Ron and Fez. Oh, I just called to tell you guys what a sick ass Billy is. He's a horrible person. No, I mean, I have never heard such a thing. And, and being a woman right now in my late 20s, yeah. I mean, I couldn't imagine any of my guy friends doing something like that. I, I mean, this poor girl just, you know, makes a mistake getting a little drunk and then has gross bad Oh, Billy touching her. I mean, I'm sure she oh. was related. I right, get Billy back in. Now, it's so funny, and it's, I don't understand. Everybody else, they tell their sad stories, and nobody reacts. Billy tells his, and people are disgusted. I'm upset. I'm going to have nightmares from now on. Well, Billy's actually, I guess your thing is it really bordered on rape. No, it didn't even come that close. Not finger? No. No, 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 nothing. It didn't even get that far. But, but you said you had her clothes off and you said diddling. Yeah, with, uh, you know, the, the upper area. Was anybody else with you? No, it's just myself. Just oh, that's myself. 
You're a rapist waiting to happen, Billy. No, I am not. He's I was a rapist under, already rapist happened. To happen. I was yeah. under the influence of a ton of coke. I was wrecked. It was oh, that stupid. makes it right. Doesn't well, make it right. I'm that justifies it. Uh, see ya. See ya. All right. Thank here's, you for the call, Chrissy. Here's Joe. Joe, you're on Reddit Fez. Hey, Joe. Yeah, how you doing, Billy? What's up? Yeah, I just want to apologize to you. I got I got drunk about two weeks ago, and I still raped your daughter. How about that, You know Billy? what? Shut you the hell up. Bastard. Oh, that's Sh awful. Shut the hell up. But that, that, Billy? But that yeah. was somebody's daughter, Billy. you got to remember right. that part. Yeah, okay. It's okay when Billy does it to other people's daughters. Here's uh, Kenny. Kenny, you're on Red of Fez. Hey, it? Kenny. What, are we hey, turning into Bash Billy Day here now? Uh, pay me $100. I'll call it off right what, now. What, I'm going to risk uh, hey, Kenny, a you're job and everything Fez. else over 100 bucks. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you're risking a job, all right. And you're going and you're going to attack people's families over $100? You feel good about that? I Kenny, feel, you're on I'll feel great once I get my $100. You know, yeah. I'll give you the goddamn $100, Fine. even though you didn't friggin' win the bet. I won Just the bet. Just to keep you quiet. You think you're going to shut me up? Well, Fez, you know, you know damn well this wasn't the bet. You know damn well this wasn't the bad. And you said they're going to bring my dad and my daughter into it for $100. I find that despicable. You might, yeah, you I will. You do the show, Billy? You know what? Do the show. Billy, you're a liar. Billy just quit. It Good. Billy just quit. Bye. You know what? You are s stooping to a level that I did not even realize existed. You know what? For a hundred friggin' dollars. I'm sorry, what's the rapist saying to me about stooping? Oh, okay. You know what, Faz? Fine. Bring it up. This is ridiculous. This is a hundred dollars. We know what we bet on, and we know, we know what we're talking about, and you're going to bring my family into something? Why? Is... And you're going to make jokes about my daughter for a hundred dollars? You're the lowest of the low I have ever met in my life. Why is everybody else a liar? Because everyone, no one else will stand up to you. They were all there. They know what the bet is. No one will stand up to you. God forbid somebody sides with Billy on anything. I can't do a freaking thing right. Boy, you that's for sure. Yeah. Well, you I, know what? I'm not going to go against you. I know what. Bring everybody in, cry. Billy. I, bring, yeah, bring it all in. in. Bring everybody in. For the goddamn hundred dollars. That's pathetic. But you're calling possible. each of them a liar. Everybody's no. a liar here. No one's going to stand up to Fez for me. No. no one's going to stick up for me. Because they're all lying. That's what you're saying, right? Are you know what the bet was. I would Are you, you say let's just talk to me. Sure. Okay? The Wonder Boy, you weren't there, were you? Yeah, I was there in the office. Oh, I didn't even know you were. Mm -hmm. What was the bet? I remember because uh, Fez bet on the Dolphins because I remember thinking he likes the other Florida team. So I thought it was odd that he picked the Dolphins because I know he's a Bucks fan. I, is he lying? Look. Is Wonder Boy lying? I can recite you. Is I'm, he lying? Whole, he's would you just he's mistaken. In? Answer the question. I, is he a liar? He's mistaken. All right, now let's bring in uh, the Swing King. Now the Armenian say, Swing King. I didn't say the other word. Who did Fez bet on? Uh, I, I thought, I was talking to Mickey yesterday, and I said I thought he, bought, he bet on the Dolphins. All right, so that was yesterday, that's, that's before we I even knew we had this problem, right? Yeah. You guys were talking about it. Is he lying? He's mistaken. Because I can remember... But you're saying they're afraid to stand up to Fez, and Fez is the lowest of the low. You think someone's going to stand up for me and admit that I would, this is the bet that we but, had? So these guys are I, lying for Fez, you're saying. But I never even said to anyone, hey, let's do this to Billy. Trust me, I don't want myself this upset. Yeah. Well, I don't want myself this mad. Well, the fact to that go you, and do this. The fact that for a hundred dollars you would stoop to such levels as to like making my life miserable, and making my family's life miserable, miserable is absolutely no, ridiculous. No, you're already yeah. miserable. Nothing Fez could do could make it any worse. You're making me pretty miserable. Well, you know what? Then fine. You know what? Because the whole bottom thing down is we talked about the bat, and you said you wouldn't. Uh, you would. You would. You would like the Texans because you don't think that Drew Brees is going to be able to to uh, have another week like he did before. And this is the whole thing we were talking about. Yes, and we had all a long that conversation, came up, and that was is the bet that I made with that you. That is not the bet, but yes, all that came up. Mm -hmm. Let's check with Mikey Day. Mikey Day, what was the bet? It was the Dolphins, Billy. And that guy never forgets anything. You know that. And he, again, again... When we're looking for old tape... Mikey D can narrow it down to a week well, out of the past year. Well, what team did I have then in the Miami Colt game? Because I'm saying I don't even know who the hell I was supposed to have. You who had the I Colts. Have? I had the Colts giving you 21 points? Yes. Indiana was favored in that game. Ugh. And I gave you 21. Do you realize how ridiculous that sounds? Yes, it was ridiculous to give the Giants 21 points. Well, that was a, that was a ridiculous game. And that, that was the big guy with way. Ronnie. Yeah, I know, but I would never. Come on, Miami and the Colts are two equally matched teams. The Giants and the Rams are not two equally matched teams. The Rams should have killed them. Based on what? 
based on the Giants' performance the week before the Giants' secondary, we talked about all the reasons why I thought that before the game. The Rams didn't win a game all preseason. Yeah, well, and on the other hand, the Jets did. And, look and they what lost to them. Denver the week before. Kenny, what did you want to say to us? Hey, Kenny. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Billy. You said uh, this is your best friend's sister that you raised? Oh, it wasn't my best friend's sister. You said sister. your friend's. You said it was. It was a guy I knew in a bar. It was a friend. It was a casual acquaintance. Don't go switching everything around. You said around it was your best sake. friend. I want to know how you don't know where your best friend lives. It, again, you're a liar, will you Billy, listen? It you're wasn't my best friend. I'm tired of everything I say getting switched around and turned you're around a loser. against me. Live with it. What? You're a loser. Live yeah, obviously it. I am. Okay, fine. Yes. Good. Goodbye. Thanks for the call. Thank you. Thanks for the call, Kenny. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Luke, you're on run the fence. Hey, Luke. Hey, what's up? Um, what? Billy Staples is calling Fezzy the lowest of the low. Lowest of the low. He called him. Uh, Billy Staples pretended to have anthrax when our country was in turmoil. Sure. Uh, doesn't that qualify him as a low? What does that have to do with making fun of someone's daughter when you think you have anthrax? Come on, let's be real here. L Hello, you know, Bob. use some common this sense. Is the kettle. You're black. Fine, I'm black. Yeah. In, uh, here's Pete. Pete, you're on the Fez. Hey, Pete. Pete. Hey, hey boys. Yeah. We're on the Fez. I didn't realize one of Billy's five letters was R for rape. No, oh, please. I'm not a rapist. Give it up. What you're would that be considered? admitted to it. And when you're molesting a drunk girl that's passed out, what would that be considered? It would be considered molest. All right. Hold on. Here comes, uh... The actually by law that you would be cons you could be charged for rape on that. Well, fine, I could have been charged for rape. I didn't. It, it didn't happen. Uh, it didn't happen. How's that? Okay. Because she, you took off her clothes without her knowing. When did you get your law degree? I'm just saying that's that's considered uh, rape right there. Mm -hmm. Then what's molestation? When you don't talk kid. No, that's m with a mi minor. Was this girl uh, 18? Definitely. How do you know? Because I know. How? Because I know her. I mean, I know how old she is. You know her? I knew how old how she well was. How old did you know her? I don't... Before you molested her. Please. I don't know. She was She was over 18. She was over 21. How I do you know? Her. Oh, now I'm a child molester? I'm asking you. I wasn't there. I I'm don't... telling you. She was older. She was like 28, 25, 28, something like that. I'm asking you how you knew this. Because I know. Because, I mean, I, you could tell. She was at a bar where I knew how old we had talked briefly. And it wasn't such a big deal. Everyone's making odd's sake. It was a stupid thing you did when you're under the influence. Carmela. Carmela, you're on run of fence. That's convenient. Hi, Carmela. Uh, I think it's pretty sad that this sounds like it's the only way Billy can even get a girl. By raping? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this was 15 years ago, okay? He was only 29 at the time. Yeah, he was so married, right? just a mixed up kid. He didn't know what he was doing. Uh, he was a married man. No, I wasn't a married man. If you listen to the show, I was separated, all right? I had already been divorced. Mm -hmm. It sounds pretty sad to me, Billy. Oh, Sorry. yeah. Everything I seem to do is pretty sad. Yeah. Yes. Well. Tom, you're a run of fest. Hey, Billy. What? It's the principle of the bet. I'm not going to even acknowledge the crap you did with that chick, but it's the principle of the bet. It's not $100. Were you in the office? No, it's the principle of the bed. Doesn't Why would that matter? If he was in, you would tell me you were wrong. But what's everybody the who was in the Billy, everybody who was in the office, you're saying is lying. Do you at least believe you haven't been set up? Yeah, but I believe there's an obviously a mix up here somewhere because there's no way in hell I would give the Miami Dolphins twenty one points after the way the job they did last week. How could six guys be wrong? I know exactly what happens. You get ahead of yourself in conversations. And you don't listen. It's happened during meetings countless times. 877-692-1027. Here is uh, Kevin. Kevin, you're on run of fence. Hey, Kevin. Kevin. Hey, uh, 27694. Hoo Thanks. Um, Billy, do you notice that even when callers get on and they contradict you, that you call them liars too? I mean, don't you think that... You know, there's some kind of paranoia that you have that kind of clouds everything and, and, and makes you think that the world is against you. I mean, you, you know you have problems, but I think they're worse than you actually think they are. And your daughter's a whore. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't deal with this. I'm sorry. Enough of this crap. Billy just quit. 
I hope so. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back. Run a fest. All right, just to uh, update everybody on uh, what's been going on recently in the uh, latest of our very odd little soap opera lives. Billy Staples uh, made a couple of huge bets, uh, not huge in terms of how much money he bet, but in the point spreads he was giving. He gave me uh, the Giants in 21 points. Which obviously course. paid. Yeah, and actually came in paid his $100. We believed that he had the same bet with uh, Miami Colts with Fez. He claims he didn't make that bet. He made a different one. And Fez and he have been at odds over the $100 that uh, he didn't show up with for Fez today. So he refuses to pay me. He's uh, actually insulting on the air. Right. And so I simply said, until I get my money, I will make your on-air life miserable. Which is no different than any other day of his life. Sure. Of course I don't know. not. I don't know why he would get upset about that. One caller brought it up earlier. How are you possibly going to make his life more miserable than it already is? Right. That one kind of stumped me. Yeah, you had nothing you could deal with there. No, well, when it's Fez, that bad. Uh, the last break ended up Billy yelling at you, calling you the lowest of the low. Right. And a couple other things. Everybody here agrees with Fez. It's not anything that was worked out before. I was only half paying attention, but I always thought it was the Miami game. The same thing comes out of uh, Wonder Boy, I believe, Hawk, the Swing King. If Mike I'm wrong, Lee. if I'm wrong, tell me. Yeah, but this is—I did not go to anybody and say, "Hey, I'm going to try to get a hundred bucks off of Billy." Trust me, I have a hundred bucks. I don't need Billy's hundred bucks. So uh, Billy says during the commercial, of course, where he says he couldn't take it anymore. He went running out of here. He left the building. Really? Took his stuff and left the building. Now, I went down in the office to look for him. You said you had a sighting of him? Yeah, Martini Steve said he saw him uh, huffing and puffing down the street. <laughs> headed towards Penn Station? Yes, heading towards Penn Station. <laughs> Same way when he was in kindergarten. Um, says, and then as I looked for him in our office, I found this on your desk. It's a scribbled out check. For $100, no name at the top, as <laughs> if he either doesn't know your name or you write it in yourself, you scum, scumbag. Very nice. I'll take it. <laughs> I will take it. I'm going to stop by uh, Chase Manhattan yeah. on the way home, if you 57th think, and 6th, and I will cash it. If you think he has a hundred dollars in that uh, bank account, my friend, you're sorely mistaken. <laughs> this is his way of getting back at me. Yeah. I wrote him a check that's boinga boinga boing <laughs> going across the desk. He might as well left you a Super Bowl <laughs> and said, "Here, I owe you one hundred dollars. Bounce this all the way." God, why is this check made of Tupperware? I'm just uh, worried that you're going to get drunk and he's going to fill you up. After he totally addresses me. We also that got that revelation during the last break. Billy, when other people were calling in talking about things they regret, things they want to apologize for now, he basically told us how he raped a girl. He had her passed out in his car, took her, all of her clothes off, yeah. and as he put it, diddled about. Like he was dear old Uncle Ernie. Uh. Fiddling about. Fiddling about. And claims... So out of it, so yeah. out of his mind on a coke uh, and booze bench that he couldn't possibly be responsible. He didn't know what he was doing. He was only 30 years old. Now, I think he was 29 or late 20s. He was in between marriages. He was in his <coughs> late 20s, in the late 20s. All right, we got an update on him, where he is? No, not yet. Uh, still trying to find him. Wonder why maybe you could go looking for him. I would do You think you can find him, Snoop? Yeah, I, I can uh I can try as long as he hasn't caught that caught the train at Penn Station yet. Well, I don't think you would have caught the train, but you might want to look in uh Charlie O's. Yeah, Charlie <laughs> O's. I'll check all the dives down there. It's not a dive. <laughs> no, but Charlie O's is not he wants so bad to be a nineteen twenties <laughs> gumshoe. He wants so bad. All the gin joints. <laughs> Now, what do you think? Do you think that, that he thinks that he's quit? Or do you think he thinks, okay, uh, I left my check, I left, and, you know, it was just one of those things where he leaves work. 
but hasn't quit. Uh, he definitely hasn't quit. All right, Allie says she just saw him scaling the Empire State Building. <laughs> I don't believe that happened. Yeah, he better not be swatting at planes. Boy, I'd like to have this handwriting on this check analyzed, too. It's just insane. That's the scribblings of a madman. It's huh? all written in blood. Here's uh, Chris. Chris, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Chris. What's up, buddy? Yeah. I just wanted to say, uh, Billy, little story reminds me of uh, my roommate in college about five years ago. Same kind of thing. Semi formal dance. Took a girl there. Had uh, too many drinks. Went back to her room, took all her clothes off, never actually did anything other than uh, just feeling her up. But uh, next day, dean of the college was there, state police were there, gets arrested, kicked out of school. He's got a sexual predator jacket now that he's got to register in every town where he moves. Same thing Billy did. All right, thanks a lot. Hey, Bert. Exact same crime. And thinking, no, no, that's not even sexual assault what I did. I only took her clothes off. I only touched her chest. You know, Bill, Billy's thing that's so, always so funny. Like, the rest of us are admitting all this stupid, awful stuff. Right. Stealing and fighting and and just being all around idiots. And then Billy thro thinks he's being part of it. Sure. I took a woman's clothes off and started to diddle her. And admits to her, I hope the girl is listening and realizes now, these many years later, these 15 years later, what happened to her. All right, not for nothing here, and it's not to defend Billy, but you see, it's going to be some kind of lobster claws type. Oh. I mean, basically, you the see what he is always hanging around with. Right. Yeah, don't think it's some sort of prom queen that got in the backseat of that car. A fuzzy uh, chicken hawk says, before you uh, cash that check, see if it's got any brown stuff on it. <laughs> <laughs> he crapped on my bet check. Here's uh, Greg. <laughs> Greg, you're on run of fez. Hey, Greg. I know, buddy. Denial, denial, denial. This poor excuse of a male orgasm. When is he going to wake up? This is the funniest show on the flagship, <laughs> and to hear Fezzi this upset, it upsets me and plenty of others. Ronnie knows me. I don't like to get myself in this big of a pitch. Fezzi Lowe, I've been a fan since Ron and Ron. I've been up and down from Port St. Lucie to West Palm Beach. I come back home. Woo. You guys are here and make me so happy. When is this pompous ass going to wake up? He's got a problem. I had one. Ronnie had one. The sky says blue. No, it's not. It's black. But right. it's blue. No, it's not. It's black. When are you guys going to have another night of fights? Well, we're going to see what happens, where we're going to end up with here, and then we'll line one up right after I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm, I'm upset right now. I'm a former alky. Uh -huh. I'm a former abuser. You understand, Ronnie. Yeah, sure. I'll put a thousand dollars against this punk ass... I'll meet him anywhere he wants to make him wake up. All right. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Greg. A Bye. battle of the addicts. That's uh, what you can basically call all the, the marriages <laughs> he was in. <laughs> A battle of the addictions. 877-692-1027. Chris, you're on Red Fez. Hey, Chris. Chris. Yo. But I... Hello? Yeah, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, what's going on, man? Listen, I got to tell you. I'm a Giant fan, right? And for him to give 21 points to the Rams after they held a perennial favorite in San Francisco and Terrell Owens to one receiving yard, one of the best receivers in the NFL, that was another crackhead bet. You know, Billy gets on the air, Ronnie, and he talks about, oh, I'd never make that crazy of a bet with the Dolphins. Yeah. I don't like the Colts. Why would I make that bet? He only made the Giants bet with Ronnie because he hates the Giants so bad because he's such a big Jets fan. He had to make that bet, not based on anything he had seen right. in the papers or the teams. And he wow, literally he... leaped out of his chair and grabbed my hand. He was so sweaty and all fired up over that. He has to turn something great like the 21 Club into something awful. Yeah. Takes all the fun out of everything. And he basically now says he acts like you robbed him. He literally called you dis despicable and the lowest of the low. He said I was despicable. He is such a punk. Nothing is his fault. Won't believe anybody else in the room that he did it. Here's uh, Christine. Christine, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, hi, Christine. Hi. Yeah. How are you? Um, I have a solution with Billy. He's going to walk off thinking, okay, maybe if I walk off, somebody will follow me, say, oh, stupid, don't leave, to 
a stupid reason to leave, and they're going to convince him to come back, thinking, okay, I'll come back, and everybody's going to feel sorry for him, and he's going to get an apology. That's what's going on. I have friends that do that, sh that oops, sorry, that uh, stuff, and that's what he's pulling. He wants to be chased. Exactly. He wants to be chased and dragged back and then thinking Fez is going to feel bad and say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, da da da, da and he's going to come back, oh, it's wrong, don't talk about my... Th Please, that guy deserves no sympathy. Now I see why you pick on him. All right, thanks. No problem. He's always the victim. Just another victim. That's Billy. Fez, I think he's going through another one of his deals again. Well, we found out he was uh, probably drunk, most likely drunk at his gig over the weekend. It seemed like he was uh, partying anyway. Yeah. When you, when you hear some of the stories. The stories coming out of the alehouse this weekend and really appeared. Then people were telling me at that place he was drinking more near beers. And he's been in and out of the oh. AA thing enough to know that you don't do that. You, it's just silly to be one of the near beer guys. Everything he touches turns to crap. 877-692-1027. Let's uh, go to Roger. Roger, you're on run Fez. Hey, Roger. Spy report, boys. All right. No Spy double report. double murder, double suicide in Times Square. Billy just took himself out. All right. Then you'd feel bad, wouldn't you, Fez? Probably not. I would have to leave early to cash this check. Check. He, this is hysterical. This may just get framed and matted and put <laughs> up on my wall. You might as well sell it to a paper mill because that's all it's worth. Whatever the weight is in paper. I'm going to keep this in the bathroom in case we're out of the Charmin one day. This will be this check that Billy wrote me. That's why Billy uses checks that way. That's all they're worth to him. <laughs> and might as well say a billion trillion dollars. <laughs> <coughs> I was. I had to go check to make sure the money didn't bounce that he gave me. I thought that that money was going to bounce. That's how bad his credit is. Check the president's face <laughs> on those 20s. I think it's Cy Spurling, president of the Air Club for Men. I wish. That actually would be worth something. All right, Rory has a story for us. Which All right, get Rory back in. I here. don't even know if I want to go on with it, but... Rory, go ahead. And I think this is the end of the Billy Day. I think he was too frustrated when he left. I don't think we'll see him again. Rory, what do you got? Uh, we had a report uh, from a cop on the phone. He's not allowed to go on the air. We can't say his name or anything. But he pulled over Billy on Saturday night. And uh, he said the guy, uh, Billy was heavily intoxicated. And he made someone else that was in the car with Billy drive home. Did he know it was Billy when he pulled him over? Do you know that much? Yes, he did know it was Billy uh, after the fact, after he got his license. How, how do you know that this cop wasn't making it up? Uh, or if it wasn't even a cop? Because he knows exactly what Billy's car looks like. Um, he also knew that uh, the relative was a uh, Slovakian that was with Billy that night. Saturday night? Yes. Is that when he did his little gig? Yes. So Billy had a Slovakian relative with him? Right. I don't know who it is. Though. And we know that was true? Yes, that was definitely true. And they knew exactly what kind of car it was. and uh, So he had a lot of details. Yes. Even if it's not a true report. Right, right. Well, who else would know that? Right. And, I mean, you know, if he wasn't a real cop, he could just come on the air and say that, you know. Right. So he, uh, did he, I guess he just let Billy go, huh? But the Billy, I driving? mean, Billy was going through crazy mood swings today. He oh, has been. He looked like he was hungover. And he, remember I asked him about it? You yeah. asked him if he was sick today. That's I go, right. Because I, I have a cold. I go, Billy, are you sick? You look terrible. His eyes look like slits. His eyes are slits, they're bright red, and he just keeps saying the whole thing of, I'm tired. I've been so tired. Yeah. I can't get used to stuff. I'm exhausted for all this drinking I've been doing. Really takes it out of a guy. <laughs> you feel a little bad now, Fez? Not whatsoever. Billy was your best friend. That's Ass Man's best friend. Oh, yeah, that's right. Not Billy, mine. Billy was Ass Man's best friend. And he's gone. I feel great. I got a fake check. We got to take a break. We'll have Wonder Boy trying to find him. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Wonder Boy's headed down to Penn Station, we believe. All right, uh, Fezzi, let's uh, update. Uh, Billy Staples ran out of here again. Crazy. 
We don't know where he is. We guess he's heading home. All over if, a football bet. After his argument with the Fezzi over what uh, football bet went on. We got Wonder Boy on the line. Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy, where are you right now? Hey, guys, right now I'm at uh, Penn Station. I'm just outside of the Charlie O's, and I actually see Billy Staples. He's right across from me on a payphone. All right. Why don't you head over there? Okay. I'm right by him now. Yeah. Billy is Wonder Boy from Ron and Fez. <laughs> he knows. You guys would like to talk to you. Can you just come on the air for one second and just tell them that? It's okay if you don't have anything to say. Just come on the air. They would like to just have you say that to them yourself. They don't want. They don't believe me. He just hung up the payphone, said believe it, and he's now walking this way. Is he walking the tracks? He said that he told me there's an effing line, but he didn't say that, and he said we crossed it. So right now I am following him. Onto the phone. Alone. You understand what I'm telling you right now? now? Leave me alone. Okay? I'm warning. I'm giving you one warning right now. Leave me alone. He's warned me to leave him alone. So does this mean that he's quit? Does this mean that you quit? He's still walking toward his train. I'm trying to keep a safe distance behind him. And when does this uh, train leave? leave? This train left the station a long time ago. So we don't know whether he's just left home early or he's quit. Right. I think the next train leaves at 2.01. Or no. It's one nineteen right now. Okay, the next uh, train leaves at one twenty nine. So he's got 10 minutes. Yes. And you don't think you can get an exclusive interview? I think he's getting an exclusive punch in the face, it seems like. But other than that, I don't think he wants to talk. He seems pretty serious. He says that... He says that there was a line that we crossed it, and then he warned me to leave him alone. Oh, wait a minute. There's the, there's the announcer. Next train to Loserville. Loserville, our next stop, now leaving Penn Station. Uh, do you guys think he'll be back tomorrow? Yes. I think we'll be, too. Because, you know, he did not say I quit when he was asked. Damn. I'm trying to get this going over my head to see whose fault it was. I think it was Billy's. Replay it all. You'll find out it was Billy's, the rapist. Rapist or a molester? Rapist. And Fez, he was young then. He was 29 years old. Yeah. Basically puberty. He had a failed marriage and a kid he wasn't taking care of at that point. Here's uh, Bill. Bill, you're around a Fez. Hey, Bill. Yeah, blood money. More like pudding money, don't you think? Yeah. Anyhow, I'd like, to, I'd like to apply for the job. I don't drink too much yet. I'm not that fat. Uh, I do have a bad temper sometimes. And you can do anything you want to my daughter. All right. See you later. All right. Keep in, in consideration. Here's uh, Tommy. Tommy, you're on run of fence. Hey, Tommy. What can we do for you? Big ass 680. hoo -ah! I want to know who's gotten more chances in life, uh, Dallas Strawberry or Billy Stables? <laughs> oh, shake it up. Oh, shake it up. How can I be the man, the man, the man? Oh, shake it up. Oh, they got to be pretty close. Yeah, they're neck and neck. Yeah. 877 <coughs> Excuse me, 1027. Uh, I need you. Who's on the phones right now? Because whoever it is, I need them off. And somebody else put there. All right, who's on the phones? Uh, Joe Dirt. Yeah, you got to move him out and put somebody in who's going to work quick. Okay. okay. All right, as soon as Wonder Boy gets yeah. back here, put him right back on the phones. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to put Hawk back on the phones. Oh, that might have to work. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Hawk. Hawk is quick. Okay. Oh, he flew. Yeah. Look at him fly. Yeah. Here's Scott. Scott, you're on run of Fez. Hey, Scott. How you doing? Yeah. yeah, I heard Billy ran off because Fezzy told him Aquaman when... <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it could have been so great. Damn. <laughs> because Aquaman was dead. That's what we used to tell the retarded kid at Damn. school, in high school. That would get him in a fever pitch. Now, you know, Fezzy, this should have been a nice day for us. We won $100 a piece. I know. He has to ruin it. Billy has to ruin everything. He did a nice gig the other night. He was going to start getting gigs. Apparently, he uh, turned that into a disaster. Spilling stuff, knocking things over, making uh, lewd comments to women, and just being totally out of control from what we heard. I heard it was totally out of control, but fun. How is that fun? I'm only knowing when I talk to the salespeople and Mikey D. He's knocking over stuff left and right, Billy is, in a place that's trying to run a restaurant. Everybody was enjoying themselves. 
according to Billy. He doesn't know. He's got his beer-colored goggles on. It all looks fun to him. You going to call him tonight? No, I'm not going to call him tonight. You going to work this thing out? Never. It's worked out. As soon as this check clears, it's worked out. Like that's going to happen. That's blood money, my friend. Yes, it sure is. We're Ron and Fez. Live on a Monday. Trying to get Billy back on the show. I don't expect to move. Billy walked out again. The alleged rapist who confessed to that crime today and uh, also welched on his bet with me, uh, again, walked off the show. Now, Fez, in, all, in his defense, you, you get paid your blood money. I got a check. I don't know what it's worth. I have no idea. I'm sure it's not worth the paper it's printed on. We'll have to see when I take it to the bank today. Hey, uh, Horde King just sent me a website where Billy puts in a bunch of jokes. What? Yeah. The bizarreness continues. All right, here's some of the jokes that Billy's written for this uh, website. And I don't know, it's called jokeemail.com. And Billy Hine is one of the big uh, writers, I guess, for him. Nice. Uh, Paul McCartney has announced the world he is indeed dating an amputee by the name of Heather Mills, which makes Ringo very happy. This way, if the Beatles ever do reunite again, he knows his job as a drummer is still safe. What does that mean? I guess you need uh, two uh, legs to be a drummer. All right. That one flew past me. Yeah. The new j show, The God, uh, God, the Devil, and Bob has been canceled by NBC. I guess even the lamb's blood above the studio door couldn't save this one. Everything's a blood joke with him. All right, some of these must be pretty old. The battle over six-year-old Ilion Gonzalez continues. Oh, God. Over if he should return to his native Cuban. I have a surefire way for the kid to get home. Just tell him Michael Jackson wants to meet him privately. And the kid will probably swim all the way back to Cuba himself. And the room just falls over in laughter. 78-year-old comedian Rodney Dangerfield has to undergo double bypass surgery. After the procedure, the comedian says he's going to have to change a lot of things in his life, starting with his act. He now says instead of getting no respect, is a heck of a lot better than getting no pulse. Wow. These are some of Billy's jokes. That These are a long way to nowhere. Yeah. Wow, do they take forever. Yeah. And there is no payoff whatsoever. He should have tried these at Red Bank. Haley Joe Osmond has been inked to star in a new movie about the youngest census taker in history. The new movie is entitled The Sixth Census. Uh, the kid's big line in the movie is, I don't count dead people. Ugh. Pathetic. Just awful. I see dead people. Mike, Mike, you're on Mount of Fez. Hey, Mike. What's going on, guys? 7546. Hoo-ah! let you know the kind of guy Billy is. That Ileon Gonzalez joke was a joke from Conan O'Brien. Of course. Well, that's parallel writing. All right, see it. Yeah, that, again, that's something else that is never Billy's fault. The fact that he steals material and then can't even deliver it. You gotta admit, you missed him a little bit now that he's walked out. Not one bit again. He'll yeah. walk again tomorrow. He never actually did quit, did he? He just kept walking. No, of course not. Here's uh, Rich. Rich, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Rich. Hey, guys. Yeah. Forget the rape. Put Billy in jail for these jokes. Is there a joke jail? Comedy jail. Billy would be on death row. Take care, guys. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Matt, Matt, you're on our run of Fez. Hey, Matt, what can we do for you? I got your new listener today by the name of Phil. Yeah. Phil, what's up? Say, Fez was wrong all the way in this thing. You had another caller call in who said that he bashed on a woman by doing the same thing as Billy did. As soon as Billy said he did it, your cry raped. Every all the listeners call in and everybody start badgering him and beating him. When did we ever say 
uh, okay to a woman. What are you talking about, Matt? You had another caller called in before Billy. We all giving an apology. Yeah. And he said that he did the same thing that Billy did. And that's why Billy thought it was safe for him to come on the radio and say the same thing. I don't remember that, do you, Fuzz? And even if we did, nobody said, hey, way to go, batching on a girl. Right. Oh, yeah, no yeah, one yeah, ever, that's right. No one ever gave that guy the seal of approval. Yeah, I told him it was rape. Yeah, but nobody badgered him about it neither. Well, he didn't stay on the line. And he doesn't work with us. Okay, yeah, he ran nor, the line real quick. Nor does he owe Fez $100. But that's just his thing. Okay, you say he owes Fez hundred dollars. Yes. I wasn't there when they made the bet or anything like that. But you know Billy is a child. Why would you make a bet with a child with the same ability as Billy has? Now you're you acting like he's going to come before it happened. I like at the Red Bank show. Again, Billy's the victim. He makes bad bets, and it's everyone else's fault. Then you're, you're not talking about the Red Bank show. What was going to happen? Yeah, yeah, we told him. We told him not to go to Red Bank. And so you knew what was going to happen with the bet. You knew it's the same thing. You knew what was yes. going to happen with the bet. Yes. So why make a bet with a child when you knew this was going to happen? You've seen it happen before it happened. So we have to watch out for him through life. Who am I? Quas Quasimodo? I can predict the future? No, because you're thinking of Nostradamus. Oh. Right. <laughs> what about Notre Dame? Well, no. they, have, they have the uh, halfback of Notre Dame, not the hunchback. And the quarterback. You know, I always used to think of the lunchbox of Notre Dame, too, when I was younger. <laughs> That's a good one. No. no I always thought, maybe I'll do something with that. I never pondered yeah, that. Never come out that way. All right, Matt, so it's all Fez's fault. Yeah, it's Fez's fault. Yeah, because he's a child. Because Billy is a child, and I took advantage of a child. Listen, only, only a child would walk off to their job every week. Tell right. me. A child would do it. Just like I said about the schoolyard, we told him about the kid about Aquaman. He got crying like a baby. Right. Only a child would do that. I say God bless, God bless the child who's got his own, like Billy Holiday said. And the you child shall lead them into rehab. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. Okay, see you. Thank you, Matt, for the call. All right, here's Sebastian. Sebastian, you're on Ryan and Fez. Hello there, Ryan and Fez. How you doing? Good. I just want to let you guys know, you're right. You know, he made a bet. He should have stood up by it. But uh, I think the guy suffered enough. You know, you guys beat up on him a little bit too much now. It's gotten to the point where I think he suffered enough. Tomorrow, you know, is another day. I'm ready to apologize. I'm not. I'm a big enough uh, man to say I'm wrong. Yes. He's, 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 I'm a big enough man to know I'm right. Yeah, but it's not about being right or wrong. You guys already beat up on him a little too much. It's not really that. He's being a victim or any of that stuff. You know, you just got to let it go. I mean, uh, you know, once in a while it, it pays off to beat up on people like that. But uh, I think he, he got the point. And, you know, he'll know he'll know better next time to open his mouth. All right. That's it. <laughs> yeah, Thanks, that's happened every time in the past. Here's uh, Carl. Carl, you're on Red of Fez. Hey, Carl. Hey, Ron Fez. Yeah. You guys are great. Thank you. Um, you guys are talking about apologies earlier. How are you going to apologize uh, after uh, Billy kills himself? I guess he'll just apologize to the surviving members of his family. Yeah, I'll, so I'll apologize to John Edwards. That's a lot of stress you're putting him through. I understand. Billy has too much of an ego to kill himself. True. All right, you thank guys you. are great. Thank, thank you very you. much. I, for one, feel like, uh, hey, I'm sorry. I enjoy my new cigars. I'm not sorry. Stay home. You, I know you like Billy Fez. I don't like Billy anymore. Ron and Fez, 1027 WMEW.